We're going to start talking about axle systems now. We've already talked about clutches, transmissions, automatic and manual. We talked about prop shafts, constant velocity joints. Um, now we're going to talk about axles, and then we'll get into wheel ends and brakes. <coughs> we'll start off with our drivetrain overview again. Uh, typical axle function, primary functions. Some of the different components, terms within that, design considerations, and then lastly, common complaints. You notice this section, just like the clutch section, will have a lot of information in it um, because there's so much going on within an axle system. And um, you'll see all that shortly. So back to this picture you've seen many times already. Now we're going to concentrate on the red and purple pieces, I'll say, um, the axles themselves, whether, they're, um, whether they are beam-style axle, like this one here on the left, or independent-style, as this one here on the right. We'll get into all those details and everything that goes on within the axle itself. So the primary function of an axle is to take the rotary motion that's coming from the prop shaft and torque and distribute it to the wheels. Now this is the first time in this, this entire day we're going to have one input and two outputs. So what does that mean? Let me... Um, get my little pointer squared away here. We're going to have one input at the front of the axle from the prop shaft and two outputs, each of the wheels. So this will be the first time we're going to split power. Everything else we've just been coupling one to one. To one. <clears throat> you may also know something else interesting I did there. The, everything else we've done today has all been in line. Here I'm showing power come in from this axis, and it changes direction. It changes uh, by 90 degrees to go out to the wheels. So here's a little part of the center section of that axle, that red piece. And the power comes in from the prop shaft in the center here and goes out either end here. So it's in this axis, and it rotates 90 degrees before it goes out to the wheels. So there's a lot of little things going on in this axle that we'll, we'll talk about. It has a gear set in it, so as with any gear set, it provides torque multiplication and speed reduction. As we mentioned earlier, torque and speed are inversely proportional. It gives us this differential action. We'll talk about what that is as far as uh, having the tires go at different speeds as you would in, in turns. And on this axle here, the beam style axle, you'll see mounting points for the suspension and brakes. The blue section of this picture, you'll see these little brackets hanging off in different areas here. And these are for mounting points for the suspension control arms. You may see spring perches on there. And then these little flanges back here to actually attach the brakes, whether they're drum or disc. You may hear people talk about modules or module assemblies, a rear module, a front module, those types of things. Keeping in mind that the module is not just the axle. It's the whole cradle assembly. The subframe, these pieces here that are in gray, the axle itself in green there. This one happens to be independent, so the half shafts and the hubs. That whole assembly is the rear drive module. What's nice about this assembly is on this one, they drop in the springs in these little pockets here and here, pop this whole thing underneath the vehicle, put in four fasteners in these little spots, and the whole assembly is put together. And some uh, manufacturers choose to pierce those body points at assembly. So if they have the, the unibody or the subframe is, is in a weird spot, it doesn't matter, as long as they're close. They get this lined up correctly underneath the vehicle and punch the holes. So the days of vehicles going down the road sideways, that dog tracking thing, if you ever heard people talk about that, those days are gone too. And if no one knows what dog tracking is, you may have seen if you're behind a vehicle and it's going down the road, and if you're behind the vehicle and you're going straight down the road, you should just see the back tires. If the vehicle's kind of going sideways down the road, you would see front and back tires. That's called dog tracking. They shouldn't go down the road sideways like that. But at times, if you, get, if you get an axle in there cocked, I'll say, because of other reasons in the build system, it may actually dog track, or if it was in an accident or something like that. Here's a, a picture of everything within a typical axle assembly. And we're going to talk about all of these things in the next hour or so. And we're going to start right up here with the companion flange where the prop shaft bolts on, 